Hey, hey everybody, it's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? Welcome to our show. Tonight is Tuesday, June 25th. It is a hot summer night out there. And uh, we just, the craziest thing happened. Bobby just texted me and he said, uh, I'm looking for a parking space. I'm having a hard time. <laughs> and I know my neighborhood can be a little difficult, but usually it's not so bad. So I said, there's two parking lots up the street. Try those. No spots, full. So we just literally, I ran down there with him. We drove around, found another parking lot, parked and ran up here. We just made it. Thank God we're in good shape. Oh my God. All right, so right away, who's coming in? Matt Coke, we know him. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Annette Zito has joined. Hi, Annette. Hi, Annette. Rena Grignali Berger, that's my cousin in Massachusetts. Annette says, Bobby, baby, she's a big fan. I don't know if you know that she was all excited. Kathy Roberti, hi, Kathy Roberti, my cousin in Massachusetts. Grace <laughs> Wall, hi, Grace. We worked together last Thursday. Grace killed it. Jay Rivera, very handsome, Jay Rivera. Heidi. Heidi. Heidi, uh, how do you say Heidi's last name? Way Wayne Mueller. Mueller. Wayne Mueller. Okay, Heidi, I could never say that. <laughs> Heidi has joined us, and uh, a lot of our friends will start joining us now. So, Have fun. It's really fun. Dana Joel Nicholson, that's my neighbor. Martin, my neighbor. Martin Marushak has joined us. Oh, my God, so many great people. Okay, so tonight I uh, – oh, and Rosie's there too. Oh, my God, this is so exciting. I couldn't wait to have Bobby <laughs> on. And we tried to uh, um, we tried to get different dates over the year, I think, yeah. a couple times, and you were super busy, and mm -hmm. um, it just wasn't working out. However, I always feel like God has bigger plans. And this could not have been a better time to have you on the show for several reasons. So uh, number one, uh, as you know, and if you don't know, it's World Pride. New, uh, New York City is hosting World Pride this year, which is a really big deal. And it's the 50th anniversary. Kate Greer has joined us. Hi, Kate Greer. She's a wonderful actress. Um, so if you don't know, uh, it's the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, the Stonewall Riots. And so New York is hosting, the world is coming here on uh, uh, this week, starting this week. It was already at work last night. It was downtown at the duplex, and it was packed already. And it's going to be packed all over the city. And you, you're starting to see a lot of businesses that are posting great things about Pride. And uh, so if you don't know what that is, you know, you can, look, you can look all that up. But you probably do know. If you watch this show, you probably do know what we're talking about. And why is it perfect timing to have Bobby on now? Because Bobby wrote, uh, it's one of many songs he's written, but he wrote a new song that's so beautiful and did this amazing video. And we want to show it to you. And it's launched this month. And so what we're going to try <laughs> to do, we've never done this. Now, once Leo comes on, he'll post all the stuff. But we're going to hold up the phone to the, um, yeah, like that. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to, so, Bob, you start that whenever you want. So tell us the name of your song. I'll hold this. Okay. The name of the song is Just Love. Just Love. And and, and then we're going to play a little of it. And then we will um, we'll play a little bit of it. Go ahead. Press it, Bobby. I know this is crazy. We've never done this before. Many things are happening. So enjoy the video once it starts. We'll get that going. I know. It's crazy. It's a crazy thing happening here. Oh, Matt's posting it already. I mean, we do have people are going to post it. But Thank I, you, yeah, husband. I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to play it. This is hysterical. I know. All right. You know what? When it comes up, it comes up. We'll All keep right. talking about it. <laughs> All right. So people are uh, Matt. Thank you for posting that. And I also sent the links to Leo. I know where is Leo when you want him, right? He's actually very reliable. So who knows? Maybe he's working. So let's talk about the video because we can play the video at any time. So what came first, writing the song or the vision for the video? The song uh, came first, and it came about uh, during the, uh, the presidential election of uh, the summer of 2016. And, you know, we thought we were in the clear, and, you know, our girl was going to win, but whatever. Okay, so. But what know. provoked the song, entitled Just Love, was uh, Ted Cruz trying to appeal to uh, whoever he was trying to appeal to, uh, and he was saying, yeah, we could – you know, take back or, or you know, uh, pull back on gay rights and gay marriage. And, and I was sitting there and I'm s screaming at the TV saying, it's the law. Right. It's just love. It's it's the law. Right. And that's where the song came from. Okay. Because, you know, it's funny. Once I saw your video when you posted it, 
and I saw it. It really, it really, really made me think about it in a whole different way. And when you said it's just love, I was like, okay, it's got a, it's a double entendre. Yes. So it's like, wait, is he saying it's just love? It's not only love. It's, it's not just love. Justice. Right. Okay. So I was, I was like playing around with that. Like, what is he trying to say? Is he trying to say it's just love? It's you were saying it's legal love. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is why I love the song as well. Because I love the It's Just Love as well. Because I thought to myself, what are people getting so tangled up about? Why would someone want to pull back something like that? Why would someone want to destroy something when we're just talking about love? We're not talking about attacking a country. We're not talking about raising taxes. We're not talking about assault. We're not talking about hurting any. We're talking about love. And they weaponize hate. Right. And the church. And this is what I was thinking about, you know, all this conservative, oh, conservatives, going back conservative value. And I thought, wait a minute, what are you conserving? Because mm. you're not conserving love. We're trying to conserve love, our love. You're conserving hatred. So if, if, I mean, these people that come after, it, I'm not everybody. I don't like to lump people because I feel like there's a broad spectrum of people in every category, good people and bad people. And I believe that the bad people tend to get more press for some reason and get out there. But I do believe that um, I, I, your song really, really uh, resonated with me. Let me just keep checking on people that are checking in because there's so many good people that we miss. Willie oh, Rosado. Willie. Jackie. I, uh, Jackie Fornatel has joined us. Hi, Jackie. Bobby, yay. Um, Maria Filiomeni, she's out in Morristown, New Jersey. Julie Cesari, she's out in Santa Monica. Jeannie Craigie, she's in Massachusetts. Hi, Jeannie. Scott Canuck, hi, Scotty. Michael Sawyer, he's in New York. Kia Nelson, she's in Philly. So we got a bunch of nice people. Right, Jeannie says love is love, exactly. And, and um, you know, but... Lately, you know, you just keep thinking about it. Like years ago when we were kids and we grew up, it was a very different world. Mm -hmm. But as time has gone on and all, you know, all of us have stayed in the game and fought. And I realized looking back, Isabel Raskowski, that's my cousin, Marisa. Hi, Marisa. <laughs> Welcome to our show. This is Bobby Belfry. You guys would get along beautifully. <laughs> She's great. Uh, Margaret Curry has joined us. I just couldn't, after I heard your song and I played it a bunch of times, I was like, but wait, it's, it is just love. Why would you hate love? Why would you hate people wanting to be together? Like, isn't that what you want for yourself? Isn't that what you want in your life? To, to have a loving family and a loving partner and loving friends and loving coworkers? Isn't, don't you want love? Everybody wants love. There's no other way. Jamie McGonigal has joined us. Hi, Jamie. Jamie's going to call in about, we're going to do it on my phone. Jamie's going to call in about nine. Oh. 920. I know we're having one of those here. It's been crazy. Um, so, yeah, as I was telling you, Bobby and I were out there looking for parking spots up until about five <laughs> minutes ago. No lie. Uh, Linda Carroll has joined us. Um, so, okay, Bobby, let's try this one more time. Let's see if it, you think okay. maybe it'll go. We're trying to show Bobby's new video of his new song that he wrote. Okay, you hold that up like that. All right. Just 
ain't free. This little cost, we hear the laurels we've lost. Born from hatred, war, death, and disease. Came our resolve, still our world revolves. As they try to keep us from the from being who we are, from being a lonesome star in a universe of walls, tethered to a pulpit, pit. occupied by drones. It's not only love, it's not it's just love. It's not only love. Michael, Michael, Michael Vacara, he's in the video. Oh, really? mm -hmm. He and his husband. Oh my God, give Bobby a big hand wherever you are. Big hand, Bobby. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so beautiful. All right, so everybody, I hope you could hear that. And uh, now you're going to be able to, um, I think Matt put up a link, and uh, we will put the links up later. So after the show, you can watch it uh, as many times as you want. If they want to, is it on YouTube already? It, yes, it's on YouTube and it's on Vimeo. Vimeo. Okay, so what, what do they type in, Bobby? Just Love, is it called Just Love? Just Love, yes. Just Love, okay, and by Bobby Belfry. B-E-L-F-R-Y. Correct. Okay, so who was, uh, you said Michael Vaccaro was in the video? He's in the video, yeah. Wow, and were those neighbors, is that a Nyack? Were you filmed it, it was a Nyack in Haverstraw and also filmed in front of Stonewall. I saw Thanks that. Thanks to Kirk Kelly, thank you Kirk. There's nobody better than Kirk Kelly. Kirk yeah. Kelly is one of the owners of the Stonewall and he also manages it and runs it like a, just an amazing place. And Kurt's just one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. And he's great to work for. Absolutely. Everybody loves working for Kurt. Thank you, Ann. Ann Steele. <laughs> Hi, Ann Steele, one of our old buddies. Yeah. She's uh, all over the place these days. She's on cruise ships. She's in Boston. She's in Chicago. Chocolatina Q Dessert. Kyle de Blasio has joined us. Eddie Kutu, my friend from Blade Salon in, uh, in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Suzanne Mason, Rona Bernadette. Hi, everybody. So many nice people. What did Matt say there? We missed something. He said, sorry for the text. You better be Matt. Now, the funny thing is that I knew Matt, your husband, before yep. I knew you. Mm -hmm. Matt was my stage manager when I was in Tony and Tina's wedding. An amazing stage manager and such a cute, wonderful, adorable guy. And then he met this guy, this really cute boy. And that's it. The rest is history. And I was like, who? And it was Bobby Belfry. And then I met Bobby <laughs> Belfry. But I knew of Bobby because Bobby's been in, you know, in the, the scene, the cabaret scene and the music scene forever. Um, and we will get back and talk about that as well. Johnny Tamara's joined us. Johnny is a great actor also in Tony and Tina's Wedding. Uh, Linda Carroll. Hi, Linda. She said beautiful voice. She's out in Massachusetts. He does have a beautiful voice. And there are other links that um, if uh, I sent to Leo, if Leo joins us, he might be working. But if not, I will post them later on to the, the feed that you can also uh, go and watch Bobby. 
So, okay, the video, how long did the video take to make? Because you had to do it in different shots, different places. Well, the video um, came from, uh, it was, well, it, my friend Brooke, who runs the, uh, the Rockland Pride Center, and my husband is also, uh, runs the Rockland Pride Center with her. I couldn't tell you the exact position, sorry, honey. That's all right. He's a big wing. My husband and uh, Brooke uh, uh, Malloy uh, run the Rockland Pride Center, and it's right in Nyack, and it's wow. in a beautiful building. Uh, Hillary Clinton came and visited us well, last. We have to talk about yeah. that. Oh, my God. First of all, that painting. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby painted a picture. <laughs> you Can you tell that story? I just sure. was, like, blown away. Uh, well, uh, Hillary, uh, they named a wing after Hillary in the Rockland, the, the Rockland Pride Center. Um, and so she came to visit, and people uh, uh, all wanted to meet her and then have photos taken with her and, and all that kind of thing. And so Matt came home and said, we really want to give her some kind of present. And, and, and he said, do you think you can paint something? And it was I like, I didn't even know you painted. It was three days out, you know. And I said, okay, sure, I'll do the Pride Center. And I took photographs of it, and I did a quick watercolor, and we had it framed. And wow. it and, uh, came out really well. And she was very nice, very gracious. And... I think the, the best part about meeting her is that she said, hello, Rosie, to my daughter. Wow. And that was very moving to me. Wow, so she knew she met Rosie. She said, hi, Rosie. And we all wore yellow or things with yellow on it because yellow is her favorite color. Wow. Yeah. She that, was lovely. I loved all the pictures that I saw posted. And I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so you painted a, a painting. I did a painting. For Hillary Clinton. For Hillary, yeah. And she has it. She has it. She, she hung it in her office in, uh, in Chappaqua. And, what? and she, uh, there were three vans. There That's were three amazing. vans. And she was supposed to get in one of the vans, and she asked, where is the painting? And, uh, and the guy said, oh, it's in the front van. She said, I want it in my car because I want Bill to see it tonight. Oh, my God. Bill. Just Bill. Bill. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad we talked about that because that's, like, a really big deal. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, you don't uh, – one of the things I love about um, – New York, but I mean, it could be anywhere that if you are involved in community affairs and you really care and you, you donate your time, you work on projects, you, you never know who you're going to run into that is like minded. Jamie McGonigal is calling us right now. Hold on a second. Jamie, are you there? I am. Oh, my goodness. Honey, you know, I have you down as Jamie McGonigal slash Malcolm in capital letters. <laughs> Malcolm is Jamie's. Famous son. This little boy is so cute. He's famous. I'm telling you, I'm going to eat him if I ever meet him. <laughs> he does that a lot. So, Jamie, <laughs> uh, you and I uh, met many, many years ago. You were actually a, a, a performer in a project that Lynn Portis, my musical director and best friend, uh, was working on called 108 Waverly, right? Yeah, yeah. And you played the main one of the main characters, and that's when I heard uh, your beautiful voice. And I've known you now. It's been what about ten years or longer? Um, that was uh, two thousand, I think. Two thousand. But you also yeah, so wow. besides being a singer, you also uh, produced a lot of a huge events, right? Uh, yeah, I used to do that in New York for a long time. I produced the World AIDS Day concert. I did that. Um, overall, almost 200 different concerts between Joe's Pub and, and the World Lakes Day concert. Wow. Uh, sort of the community swaps and cuts concerts, the uh, uh, songs that were cut from musicals, songs from musicals that were not so successful, and uh, and these Broadway Love the 80s concerts we did for a long time. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. And when did you decide to move to D.C.? Uh, it was 2010. Uh, I, I started getting involved um, politically uh, right after Pop 8. Uh, and uh, I ended up uh, putting together a rally in D.C. Uh, to find that at Don't Tell, and I was handing out flyers at gay bars the night before, and uh, a guy came up to me and he said, you're not from here, are you? And I said, how do you know? And he said, you're carrying a big game after a D.C. map. Mm. Uh, and uh, he spent the rest of the night handing out flyers to me, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I moved down here about a year later, and we got married in 2013. It's great. Um, yeah, and then we, we also, the two of us, uh, my husband and Sean, and we had, uh, we organized all the rallies that happened at my uh, Supreme Court around the uh, Dome here in the top eight um, for the, the petition day and the, the uh, Wow. 
And and when did Malcolm come into? Did was Malcolm something that you had planned, or or? We had thought, but we obviously had, had uh, <laughs> we tried to have kids, but it didn't work out. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we ended up having uh, going through foster care in DC. Wow. Um, and uh, we had been told that you know the uh, what you would probably expect is to have. Them. An older child, uh, since we were uh, knocked out of the foster system, uh, and, and told very clearly that we would never end up with getting me to get it out of our head. It was never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we waited for two years on the on the, the list, the disposal list, uh, with, with child services. And then uh, we were thinking about renewing and thinking about not renewing. Um, and in the end of 2017, because we just waited so long, it's kind of heartbreaking to wait that long. Yeah. Um, and uh, we decided to get two puppies. Um, because oh my we, god! We just lost. We just lost our dog, and, and uh, but we didn't think the baby thing was going to happen anytime soon. So we, uh, yeah, we got two puppies, and then a month later, we got a call saying we have a. a <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, within within forty eight hours, we we went from having not being parents to suddenly being parents. So, right. Um, wow. Pretty. Pretty wonderful time. Our family, our friends, really came out of the work to help. Um, we had to open about 200 boxes from Amazon the next day, the next week. Uh, it was really like it's a wonderful life. I think everyone wanted kind of a, a good story at the end of 2017, which is kind of tough for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so we were we were very happy to be that story. Wow, it's a beautiful story. I mean, I, I've been following you. I mean, I've always loved your voice, and you're such a sweetheart. But this was really something that what was happening, I was watching it happen, you know, on Facebook and Instagram. I'm like, oh my God, like, it's just amazing. And um, I don't know if you know, but Bobby also uh, has, a uh, and, and Matt adopted a little girl. Um, so we're going to talk about that too, um, you know, after after uh, we get off the phone with you. But, so that's, I, when I, th- I said to Bobby earlier, when I think of Bobby uh, when I see Bobby and Rosie and Matt, I also automatically go to you and Sean and Malcolm because, you know, you remind me your, your journeys are very similar and I'm just, I'm blown away. First of all, I was, I never was a person that was in a position to actually have a baby and, and I really never, it didn't come up and it wasn't something that I, you know, I didn't feel like I missed out on it, but I work with kids a lot and I love them. But I'm always yeah. so moved when people do go the, the the distances that they go to to adopt a child. It's incredible. That is a child that is wanted on every level. You know, I was on the um, I was on the Rosie cruise, the, the family, our family cruises, uh, their very first year, and I, as a person who have children, was sitting in the middle of this pool area. And there were just hundreds of kids and, mm. and all their LGBT parents. And the only thing that could run through my head is that there was not one of these kids here that was not fought for. Right. And, and the, the, none of these kids were had by accident. None of these kids were, um, you know, they, they, they were all just so loved and, uh, and fought for, like I said. Um, mm. And that, that I wish someone, I wish some of the people at that point, that was, I think, 2004. I wish some of the people who were so anti-gay and, and so hateful to work us could sit there and just be you know, that. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's an, yeah. a really good point. Every child is wanted. Um, wow, that's a really powerful point. Now, um, so uh, so you're going to continue, to, you're going to stay in Washington, right? You like it there? Yeah, for different, I mean, I like parts of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that Hyatt's right outside D.C. Um, and, and so I don't, luckily, I, I work from home, so I don't luckily have to, uh, to traverse into uh, the, the areas of D.C., which are now popular by Red Hats right now. Okay. Uh, so it makes things a little more comfortable. For me. And I'm uh, sure that you have a, a wonderful community out there, as you would here. You have so many. Absolutely, yeah. You have great, great folks. Well, listen, I, I, I want to thank you for calling in, and I just, I just, I'm going to continue to follow you and Sean and Malcolm, and I just think what you're doing is beautiful, and happy pride to you and your family. Thank you, you too, and Bobby, great work with that video. That was just not gorgeous. Thank you so much, and I enjoyed your article today about Malcolm's hair. It was really <laughs> enlightening. 
Yeah, so you guys are friends, and, you know, you, we'll, we'll just all follow each other. And, uh, Jamie, you know, you can always post stuff on my page if you – if you uh, and I'll post it to the What's the Story with Maria page, anything that's happening, okay? Awesome, thank you. All right, and happy Pride, sweetheart. Thank you, darling. All right, Take thanks care, for Jamie. calling in. Bye. Wow. <laughs> that was really intense, what he said. Yeah. About you being on the – so the Rosie Cruz, I think they still exist, right? Yeah, and actually it's our our family cruises and Ann Steele and, and Kelly Carpenter up. are – yeah, they're still there. Wow. Yeah. So um, exactly that. You know, it's like let's go back and scroll back because I know a lot of people were commenting and we were – Showing the video and then also talking with uh, Jamie. So, Michael, let me see. Uh, okay, so we're up to here. And now Don Giovanni joined. Mandar. Don! Mandar Chick Magnet, my friend Mandar. His <laughs> birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Mandar. He's always flanked by hot girls. That's why I named him Mandar Chick Magnet. <laughs> Richard Skipper has joined us. He's famous. You know, who doesn't love Richard Skipper? Liz Goldenberg has joined us. Uh, have Bobby Belfry on your show, and he doesn't tell anyone in the rock. Oh, my God. You know, Richard always has to jump in there. All right, let me see what else. Annette Zito, everybody's commenting. Joy uh, McNaughton, she's from Massachusetts. Hi, Joy. Mark Katzoff is also from Massachusetts. Susan Bennett Goulet. Hi, Susan. Um, all right, this is where the cool kids hang out. You got it. You should be on the show some night, Susan. I would love it, you and, and your girl. Um, all right, so Maria uh, Stone. Okay, so Jeannie Craigie uh, is uh, in the political world there in Stone, Massachusetts, which is my hometown. Jeannie, I, I'm so glad that you posted this. Uh, she said Stone, which is my where I went to high school, had our first Pride oh, wow. event. So proud, uh, so, so proud of the ham and you for all uh, you do to spread the good word. Great stories and songs. Now, Jeannie, I got to tell you something. I was home uh, a couple of weeks in a row because my dad was sick. He's bet much better now, thank God. But he was had, had surgery, and I just went home to help. I was so moved. I saw a post of Pat Kilty. Pat Kilty is uh, the mom of, uh, of some of the people I went to high school with. She was this involved, great involved mom, and she still is very much in the community. And they were having these pride socials, mm -hmm. like ice cream socials. And I was like, what? In, <clears throat> in my hometown, which is like – the suburbs, you wouldn't associate pride with these places. Right, right. But I'm just so proud of what you folks are doing there. It's so moved. I just think it's wonderful. And like we were talking about Bo uh, Bobby's video, what it just keeps, I keep singing it in my head and in my heart. It's just love. Like it's just love, like legal love. And it's like I kept hearing, what's the big deal? It's just love. And like um, Jamie was saying about these children, they're wanted. What's wrong? What's wrong with children that don't have homes, having homes, mm -hmm. having love, being wanted? What's wrong with that? You know, so, and, and, you know, just if you're one of these people that is bothered by that, just take a minute. Nobody's going to change overnight. It's not authentic if you do anyway. But just think about what we're, what we're mm -hmm. saying. Nobody is trying to bang anybody over the head with anything. Just give it some thought. You know, that's all I put out there. Now... There's so many things that you do, Bobby, and I want you to be able to talk about <laughs> all of them. I always check the time because then all of a sudden we're like out of time. Right. But can we talk about Rosie? Totally. Okay. So tell tell us tell everybody out there the story of of you and Matt and Rosie. Um, <clears throat> Rosie, uh, Matt and I became foster parents, and we took classes. And on the very last day of class was Rosie's birthday, uh, August thirteenth, two thousand fourteen. No, 2013, I'm sorry. That was the very last day we took a class. And uh, we had a few uh, bites, so to speak. Uh, we were gonna... But you hadn't met Rosie yet. No, we okay, had some so... kids that were supposed to come and they didn't, and it didn't work out. And uh, well, yeah, We didn't really have an attachment. You know, we right. knew we wanted to be parents, but we didn't know how or whatever. So we went along, you know, Matt is a business owner. I, you know, I, I continue to sing, I work. Uh, and then uh, we got a call uh, early in the week in January 2015, oh, there's a baby, you know, are you interested? You know, to foster. Wow. Yeah, sure, yeah. absolutely. So what, but, but explain to people what the difference between fostering and adopting is. Well, fostering is uh, uh, usually the parents, they can't, they need to get their act together. They, they, they don't have the time or even the money 
to take care of a newborn or any child. Right. So they'll say, could you, you know, they'll, they'll give it to the baby, not give the baby, but the baby will become a ward of the county and it'll be placed with a family, a foster family. Watch the, you, you take care of this child. So she came in, it was January 15th, and uh, we, Matt and I were hanging out. How old was she? She was 17 months. Wow. We were having you know, wine, just chilling out on a Thursday night in the winter, and, and, and they, the social services called and said, uh, hey, remember the baby we talked about? Uh, you want her? Sure, okay. Yeah, we'll be over in 10 minutes. Wow. So it's we like had to like stop time. drinking. Uh, had to clean the house. Right. Matt had to run to Walgreens and buy anything that had anything to do with babies. We had no idea. Right. Uh, and uh, they, she was covered, you know, with a hood and a snorkel kind of hood, and uh, she was placed in my arms, and I pulled the hood off, and I pulled it back, and she looked at me, and I. This was my child. I knew right away. Yeah, and uh, the first thing she looked down, my dog was barking like a maniac, and she looked down, and she said. Puppy. Oh my God. That's how I knew it was my kid. Oh my God, that's beautiful. And she's so beautiful. And the funny thing is that she looks like she could be your biological daughter. A lot of people say that. She, I, my sister has three girls and she looks like the fourth girl. And what I love as I'm watching her, because I also follow, um, you know, I follow you and Matt. I mean, I know you guys, um, I think longer in a different way, but I follow you and Matt and Rosie and you guys are such great parents. That little girl is so um, taken care of and happy and sassy. She's <laughs> sassy. Like that video you showed me of her, like just flipping her hair and, <laughs> you know, like she's so confident and happy and well adjusted. And as is Malcolm, you know, um, Jamie's son, it's like these babies are so happy, you know, and I think like, how the stars lined up like you and like you said the last day of the class was rosie's birthday yeah you know so um and how does it work out like with school like do you do you find that parents are pretty open or have you ever had any pushback? we live in an incredible community okay great. uh very progressive uh nyack rockland county parts of it are very progressive and uh, she goes to a great school she has an amazing teacher Mrs. Hudock, yay! Yay, shout she out. She just graduated uh, kindergarten, and she, uh, you know, she's blossoming. She's, yeah, she she's really, really is. Does she have a, does she know that you're a singer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so she knows. I sing, I've sung in front of her class a million times. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, she must be so proud of you. I think she is, Does yeah. she sing along? Does she yeah, like well, our favorite song right now is a Lady Gaga song from Star is Born. Uh, 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 I'll always remember us this way. So we sing that together. Oh, I love that. And she loves that. That's beautiful. Okay, now Bobby, I've I've known you as a singer for a long time. So let's show Bobby's um, CDs here. I dropped one of them. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, we were talking earlier about what CDs mean now and what they used to mean. Yeah. I mean, when I first moved to the city, I don't even think CDs existed. And then they did exist, and we made a bunch of And it seemed impossible to make it, right? Well, it was really expensive. Really expensive. Really? Okay, so here's one of them. Now, you can get these on iTunes as well, which iTunes now, I just heard the other day, is also, there. Is it ending? I don't well, I can't yeah. figure it out. So <laughs> you're better off buying CDs, guys, and keeping your little <laughs> CD players. You can buy one for 20 bucks these days. <laughs> so these are Bobby. Which one? Bobby, which one came? Which one came? Which one came first? Wow! Look how cute. <laughs> In perfect rhymes. Did yeah. you write any of the songs? I wrote on most of them. Rick Jensen's on there. David Friedman's on there. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you can get this on uh, Spotify as well. Uh, yeah. You can stream them. You can buy them. You could uh, download them anywhere. Right. And then this one is second? That's uh, my latest CD. It's uh, It was produced by David Budway. It's oh, a, we love David Budway. The, well, I have one song on here that's mine, but they're all uh, great American songbook songs. Wow. That's With great jazz arrangements by David. Oh, I love it. And we'll, I want to talk about Maureen's too. Okay, and what is this, Bobby? This is a CD, DVD, and we were talking about how quickly uh, uh, platforms or uh, go out, you know, become obsolete. Yeah, <laughs> so true. we made it. A live DVD thinking, oh, we'll be like cutting edge. And a year later, DVDs were pretty much done. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> but I, like I said to Bobby as we were running back from the garage, <laughs> I said, you know, I have a feeling like, like look, I, I'm a pack rat. If you look at this apartment, I have <laughs> shelves and shelves of things. And under my bed, I have 
all these full boxes of things. And I keep most of my CDs. I'm one of those people. I keep a lot of things. I still have vinyl. And you see, everything comes back. And I also feel like um, I don't like to part with things because exactly for that reason. Then, like, all you know, you never know. Then things are gone. It's like now iTunes is, I don't know. I'm, listen, what I'm all about buying CDs. So if you are someone that um, is sentimental like I am, you know, where can they find your CDs, Bobby? How can they get them? Amazon, CD Baby. Do you have a website? I do have a website, bobbybelfry.com, and okay. you can actually download them right, right And on that there. is spelled for our radio listeners, Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, B-E-L-F-R-Y, bobbybelfry.com. So, and there's some beautiful CDs. Bobby has a gorgeous uh, tenor, beautiful tenor voice, but he's also like a rocker. Like I love at the at Brandy's where uh, Bobby's been there for a long time, and I sub in there. Uh, I love it when you do um, the Boss. I love when you do Bruce Springsteen. He's my favorite. He's great. So Bobby's a rocker too, as well as American Songbook. David Foley Jr. has joined us. David, also another great dad. David was on the show. Michael Harper, my friend. Um, Stephen Elbell. Hi, Stephen. Uh, George Hernandez, he's in Miami. Steven is in New Jersey, along with Jeffrey Campbell. So, okay, you do a lot of things, Bobby. You're at Brandy's what nights, if people want to Saturday find you. Night. Saturday night. This weekend, I'll be there Friday and Saturday. It's going to be it's going to be busy. So Friday okay. and Saturday, you'll be there. And then, um, now, I also want to talk about the movie. Didn't you make a movie? I was featured in a music documentary entitled This Time, and uh, it's all, I was in it with the Sweet Inspirations, who were Aretha and Elvis's backup group, singing group. Wow, and what, what was that about? It was, uh, they were just following. Uh, Did this, they find you? Victor Mignotti, the filmmaker, uh, I sent him the first CD. Uh, he did a great movie called Broadway Damage, and I saw that he was a filmmaker, and there were really good songs in it, and I thought, oh, maybe I'll submit my CD, and he'll put my songs in his next movie. Wow. And guess what? He did. <laughs> he made a documentary, and he included a lot of my music. And, and the lesson there, folks, <laughs> is that uh, people are not going to knock on your door. Yeah. They're not just going to come to your house or whatever. They might, but if you put something, if you, if you have a thought, hey, maybe I should do this, do it. You have nothing to lose. The worst that can happen is someone doesn't call you or someone says, oh, thanks, thanks anyway. But you have to let people know you're out there, you know, speaking to the artists out there. Uh, or anything that you do, you have to let people know. Now, speaking, I want to go back to artists too. So what's the name of the movie again? This Time. This Time. So if you can, I think you can find it on Netflix, right? You can stream it, yeah. Okay, Bobby, is, it's a documentary, mm -hmm. and you are in it. Now, I want to go back to the actual artist, the painting. When did you start? I didn't even know you painted. I've always been a visual artist I, um, in school, and I was always the artist in the class. And I studied in college when oh, I was wow. younger, and, uh, I, and it's something that comes up every once in a while. And, and Matt said, paint a, I don't know, paint a painting for Hillary Clinton, and you just whipped one up. And I was watching TV, you know, Facebook, and, okay, I guess I have to go to the store and buy some art supplies. <laughs> wow. And it was, it was that watercolor, simple. right? Watercolor, yeah. Well, it was beautiful. And I love, I love how excited she was when she saw it. Yeah. That really makes me happy. Um, all right, so now I am going, we're going to uh, go into the section of our show. You know, we have a section of the show that's a food section. I oh, I thought we were going to dance. Okay. Well, Smart no, time. we're going to do that after the show, but... <laughs> Uh, Thomas Stilling has joined us, Celeste Galisi Campbell. We went to high school together. Hi, Celeste. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, Bill. Bill Goffey. We love Bill Goffey. He says, I'm late. He's always late. Jesus. Always. I know. And he's always making those crazy noises. Where <laughs> is Leo tonight? We are missing Leo. Do you think he overslept again? Who knows? Uh, but Leo works a lot of hours. So, okay. What did I make? So the section of our show, the food section of the show is called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. Bobby, do that with me. Ready? Go, Go ahead. ahead. Keep, Keep eating. eating. All right. So but I always ask restrictions, preferences, allergies. And Bobby, I, I know that is, he's a vegetarian, kind of sort of leaning towards vegan. Mostly vegan. Mostly vegan. Um, so I A little pregnant. Cheese I, once in a while. <laughs> okay. So I tried to avoid, I, I, I don't know if it's completely, I mean, there's no cheese. There's no, I don't think there's dairy. I, I did use butter. 
That's theory, but you know, all I right. cheat every once in a while. Okay, all right. So I can't lie. I'm not good at lying. I went to Catholic school. Here, <laughs> so what did I make? I made, um, I sauteed eggplant, mm. asparagus, red and orange baby peppers, portobello mushrooms, which I love, um, and um, Brussels sprouts with a little bit of red onion in garlic, olive oil, butter, uh, and I put a little sesame and poppy seeds. In nice. It. And it's, oh, a tiny bit of white wine, just a tiny bit. So, uh, and that is over quinoa mm. rice. Delicious. I mean, quinoa brown rice, okay? And then, this recipe I cannot take credit for. Oh, I make all my own recipes, but this particular one, Judy is uh, flying out today. She's going on a, a, a trip to Europe, and her home chef came, and so she's like, I'm not gonna be able to use it. And they actually had this delicious tofu recipe, so I made it. Oh. Yeah, oh. and it's um, it's rice, um, it's uh, rice with, um, I marinated the, uh, the carrots and the cucumbers in uh, rice wine, uh, rice vinegar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there are asparagus here, but then the tofu that comes with a big block of tofu, I cut it up nicely and grilled it with a little bit of teriyaki, mm. some um, aspar I mean uh, avocados, and there it is. So that is kind of our sort of salad tonight. Nice. Sometimes we have, so those were, that's what I made for us tonight. And then I actually found a vegan dessert. I was at Trader Joe's today, my favorite <laughs> store, and they had vegan, hum I mean, uh, banana, nut bread. Awesome. So this is what we have tonight for dessert. Yeah. So we eat, are eating healthy, and it goes perfectly with my week because I'm trying to do uh, like a protein and vegetable diet. And just I just want to get. I don't. I don't need to be skinny. I never need to be skinny. That's not my thing. I just want to fit into my damn pants. <laughs> Me too. Okay. That's that is my goal in life to fit into my damn pants because I refuse to go up a size. <laughs> and a couple of weeks ago I had to because I needed pants for a gig and I was like, this really is the end of it. This is the end of the road. I'm going on a diet. So that's what I did. So, um, all right, Bobby. So now you, the, we're, the video, how do you work on getting a video out? Well, uh, we did it in, in tandem with the Pride Center. Uh, my friend Brooke Malloy, who's the uh, director of the Pride Center, um, I actually, the song was inspired by her because she is such an advocate for the LGBTQ community. And you know her through Matt? And I know her from the, uh, I met her at Brandy's many years ago. She oh, came wow. in with uh, Brienne, uh, who is David's wife, Brienne Higgins, wow. and they were friends and we became friends. And then I moved up to Nyack where they live. And one thing, it's, it's beautiful just an community incredible, up there, right? incredible community, really wonderful people. And so I, we were, Brooke and I were talking in David Budway's bar, which is Maureen's jazz cellar. On, right, which I'd love on to Broadway talk about Broadway in Nyack. That. So great, amazing place. Um, and we were talking, I said, I wrote this song. She said, let's do a video. Wow. And so I did a storyboard. I gave it to the filmmaker. Her name is Shar Adreas, and uh, she's an amazing dancer as well. And, uh, and it was very quick. We had friends come and, and do it, and it was really... Really and easy. I hope everything I ever create is that and easy. And how, how long did it take you to do? It took, we did it in two days, in two really? sessions. So it was pr probably, it took three hours maybe altogether, four really? hours. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Um, all right, I do want to, because otherwise I'll forget if I don't do things right away. I do want to talk about Maureen's Jazz Cellar. Mm. I wanna talk, let's talk about David Budway. You, you guys know each other from Brandy's. Uh, I was doing Cabaret Show, and my musical director at the time was Christopher Marlowe, who got the call from Kathy Lee Gifford and Regis Philbin that he, they, he had to play for them. And he said, well, I got this great guy. And of course, I was, you know, pissed because we were doing a show, a run of shows at 88. Remember wow, 88? Of course. And it was very important to do well there because that was a great place. Yeah, I loved 88. I miss 88. And so Chris said, well, I know this great guy. His name is David Budway. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I gave David my music, and he... Nailed it. We've been together ever since. <laughs> 20 Isn't years. Isn't that amazing? Almost, yeah. You know, when you think yeah. about stuff like that, it's like those moments when you're like, oh, why does this have to be this? Why didn't this work yeah. out? And what we, I love that saying that says, God has bigger plans. I love that because mm -hmm. you just don't know sometimes the universe is, or, or whatever you believe in, is trying to align you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we resist it but we don't realize that it's the universe saying, oh, no, 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 you're going to love the way right, this right, story right. works out. Yeah. And so now Maureen's um, jazz seller 
was opened by David? David and his wife, Brianne. Maureen uh, Budway is David's sister, and unfortunately she passed away from breast cancer a few years ago. And uh, they turned grief into a beautiful place for the community to hear amazing music. And where is it? Do you remember the address offhand? It's uh, 2 North Broadway in uh, Nyack. Okay, and it's an open Underneath the pizza place. Seven nights a week? Uh, no, it's, I, I believe, tonight's the open mic. I'm going to go there tonight. It's oh, Tuesday cool. through Sunday, usually. Tuesday through Sunday. Okay, yeah. so, uh, and what are they open at, like, eight? Depends. Uh, sometimes they'll have two shows in a night, or maybe just one. They have a drag night once a, once a month. Really? Everyone's uh, it's once one Wednesday a month. Everybody's got. They have, have a, drag a night. dead night, Grateful Dead night, every really? Thursday night. I'm there a lot. Really? <laughs> How yeah. fun is that? It's really incredible. And uh, one of the uh, actors in The Sopranos, I can't remember his name, unfortunately, does an acting class down there. Steve Sharipa. Is it? I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. it will play Buckle Up. Yeah. He's such a nice guy. I've met him at different events. Uh, that's why I mentioned his name, because he seemed like the one that would be doing something like that. Yep. Uh, and he's a local guy, mm -hmm. and he's like such a giving guy, and I know he spends a lot of time. He might live in Yonkers or up that way. Um, so I, I can see him doing something like that. It's great. Sure. He does an acting class. Yeah. There. Yeah. Wow. So uh, Maureen's uh, Jazz Seller, it's called? Correct. So do they have a website? Probably MaureenJessica.com. Yeah. Oh, look it up. Just Google it, and you can find all the events that go on. And David Budway and his wife, Brienne, mm -hmm. open that uh, in memory of uh, Maureen. And like you said, they turned grief into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's the way to do it. Now, uh, my Look at my honey has joined us, Eudania Mesa. Hi, honey. Hi, Eudania. Um, and Bill Young has joined us, and now, I don't know if you know about this, but this is my cousin Gina Savino, and when Gina Savino comes on, we have to clap. Gina Savino, everybody! <laughs> this is just something we've been doing since the beginning. Gina Savino and her sister Joyce have a hair salon, Joyce's Unisex Salon, 132 Ferry Street, and that is in Everett, Massachusetts. So we want to give a shout out to them. Judy is traveling, she's a world traveler, she's traveling to France. Uh, shortly, so uh, what am I going to do without you for two weeks, Judy? I don't know. Um, I'm going to be in trouble because every two seconds I'm calling Judy about something. <laughs> All right, uh, and she's the clean one in the relationship. Definitely not me. Nick Dote has joined us. Hi, Nick. Um, Mandar, what has happened? Yeah, fit into who's... I, I can't fit into my pants, Mandar, so I had to go on a <laughs> diet. Judy started the keto diet, and I was like, and she's pretty much a vegetarian, but so she had all these vegetarian ideas. Judy, I made the, I got a shark because she wasn't here. Look what I made from, uh, from the home chef, from your package. Isn't that great? Judy's been making all these great home cool. chef things. Yeah. I am just, I'm a different kind of cook. I just kind of throw things together and make my own thing. But she makes these great recipes from home chef. So Thomas Lineman has joined us. He's in Massachusetts. Now, if you are listening to us, we got about 10 minutes left. We want to remind you that we are on armed radio which if you get your TuneIn app, wherever you are, you just type in Armed Radio, and they have a ton of great shows, and we are one of the shows that they that they house, and we want to thank Joe Savino. Joe Rocks is his, um, his stage name, and he has a, 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 his own show, and we want to thank Jim Bell. Jim Bell is our producer and engineer. He's amazing. Jim has been with us from the beginning. I would be lost without Jim Bell, so I want to thank Jim Bell, and... Um, so you got your TuneIn app, you can listen to it. If you're on your computer, you can type in armed, armeddigitalmedia.com, armedradioglobal.com, and the show will come up automatically. Now, if you miss the show, don't worry, because you can find it in podcasts on Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And you just type in What's the Story with Maria. Make sure you put the Maria part in there, because there's a couple shows called What's the Story. What's the Story with Maria, and it'll come up. And this is episode 102. We have 102 episodes. Awesome. Congratulations. I know. That's how fun, great. right? And we've, uh, we've had a lot of really great people on the show. Now that um, Ann Steele and I were talking a couple of weeks ago, we have to get Ann Steele on. Oh, look who's joined. Oh, Emily Nicholson. That is Dana's wife. She's next, they're next door, my next door neighbors. They're so <laughs> cute. I love them. Joe she, Gullah's here. I love <laughs> Joe Gullah. Now, Joe Gullah just won another award. He is winning awards left and right. Stop showing off, Joe. We can't keep up with you. No fruit in his absolute soda. No fruit. You have been his bartender as no well fruit. as me. 
no fruit. What happens, Joe, if, you, if we accidentally put a lime in there? Does he freak out? Do you know? Does he dig in there and take it out? I don't know. What's that about? Joe, you think it's scurvy. Remember <laughs> <laughs> when we were kids? And You're they, an limey. And they taught us about yeah. the pirates. You're going to get scurvy, Joe, if you don't have a lime. <laughs> Absolute soda, no No lime. fruit. That's it. And he'll tell you. Does he come up to Brandy's? He used to, yeah. Well, he came up uh, maybe a couple of months ago with uh, Nancy Zito. We had so much fun. Yeah, he comes to downtown at the duplex all the time. This is so much fun. Yeah, we're having a great time. So, Bobby, what's uh, you're gonna keep showing the video, you're gonna keep singing. I hope you always sing. Well, I'm in a uh, <laughs> I'm in an 80s band, also. You are, yeah. Well, 30 years, 30 plus years ago, I was you know, I grew up on Long Island and I was in a cover band and we sang in all the bars. And we decided, hey, let's get back together and see if it's still fun. And really, it is, it's really fun. Well, I bet it's even more fun. Now. It's more fun now because now I actually know how to sing. Oh, Bobby, you could always sing, but I technically think, I know how to sing. I think we're more comfortable now, as singers. We don't and there's not as much attachment to what's gonna happen. Well, that's what it, it is. I was just gonna say, you know, when I was younger, I almost like was an out of body where I watched and listened to myself and judged myself mm -hmm. and worried about everything. Now I just sing. Now I just have fun. Yeah. So I think that's more. So where when does your band play? When can we catch you? We're going to be at the Nutty Irishman in Farmingdale on what? July 13th. That is so fun. <laughs> and what's the name of the group? The Keep. The Keep. Okay, so if you're in the Long Island area, the Nutty, the Nutty Irishman, Farmingdale, Keep will be playing on July 13th. That is fantastic. Do you ever do any of the cruise ships that Ann does? I have. I did a cruise ship many years ago, and I loved it, and I haven't done it since. And how long, <laughs> how long was your, uh, what was the gig? It was, like it was week? two weeks, and uh, it was wonderful. I actually wrote a lot of songs on my first album from that trip alone. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, do you play piano? I don't, no. I, I write either. lyric and uh, melodies. and um, That's and I how I do with, it, yeah. too. That's how I And then we work with great people. We work with amazing people. Yep, that's the trick. Kevin Lucky co-wrote Just Love With Me, and uh, David Budway and I collaborate, Chris Marlowe. Wow. Mark Hartman, Stephen Mark, Ray Watkins. All great people, all great people. Yeah, I write with Lynn Portis, written with Karen Cole, uh, just a lot of great. you got to find good people to collaborate with. That's what the, yeah. that's the key, you know? Mm -hmm. So now we have about, Mm, maybe about three minutes left to our show. So how do you want to use it, Bob? You want to, you want to, I always, I usually ask this question at the end. I say, if there's somebody out there listening, you know, about when it comes to creativity, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you another question. Okay. Because you're an amazing dad. And I just love the way you and Matt love Rosie and the way she loves you. And it's a, it's a tough world we live in. Like, New York is great. We live in this wonderful place where it's accepting. But you step outside, mm -hmm. and it's not so great. It's scary. It's very scary. So what would you tell parents um, that want to adopt and are afraid to? Gay parents? Yeah. Or parents in or, I, Well, I mean, anybody. Frame it the way you like to frame it. Well, it it's, it's, can be really heartbreaking. There are many times that Rosie was take, almost taken from us, and it was devastating, just the thought of it. And I also have friends that have been through it, and they put they invested all kinds of money with the promise that they would have a baby, and twenty thousand dollars later, there's no baby. Right. And they're being get ripped off. It's, now, Rosie is your baby now, right? Totally legal. Yeah. Totally legal. Okay, and um, so if that is where your heart is taking you, stay in it. I guess you you have to go with what what life gives you lots of times but yeah. there are lots of children out there that need love and there's lots of ways to reach them uh i i personally teach and i have all these beautiful souls that i'm surrounded by and i love them and you can volunteer there's so many places after school there's so many things that you can volunteer with after school in your community just google it you know mm -hmm. people are looking everybody needs love especially kids be of service in any way right be of service um, and Bobby, you're going to keep singing. I, folks, Saturday nights at Brandy's, such a fun night. Now you have Rick Jensen there, right? We have Rick Jensen, Lauren Muffson, Joe I'm, Arzone. It's I, a pretty great night. I do you know after all these years, I had never, I had never known Lauren Muffson. I had heard of seriously. Her. Yeah, can you believe this? Wow. I'd seen pictures of Lauren, but I never had met her. Yeah. And we worked together. We had the pleasure of working together a few weeks ago. 
What a Are great you, night. Oh, no, she's the best. Oh, my God. She so is the best, isn't she? So, uh, I, actually, I called Lauren to see if she could be on the show with us tonight. Oh, cool. But she couldn't do it. But she's going to, I'm going to have to have her on. She had, because her kids mm -hmm. are had some activities. So, you know, when you're a mom, and, yep. you know. And she also fostered her children and, and adopted them. Well, well, I knew they were adopted, but I didn't know about the fostering mm -hmm. part of it. Amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of great people out there, folks. So, you know, let's keep our hearts open. I always say this. Let's keep our hearts open. And um, so Pride is this weekend. If you live in New York, uh, word to the wise, downtown is going to be crazy. So give your, <laughs> it's just going to be crazy. Go to Brandy's Piano Bar on Friday and Saturday night, 235 East 84, between 2nd and 3rd. You will have a gay old time. Jimmy, how much time do we have? Probably about a minute. Yeah, a minute. But thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, we want to thank Jim Bell, our producer and engineer. He's fantastic. Um, so go see uh, Bobby at Brandy's. Brandy's is a, an amazing place. Between East, uh, it's East 84th, between 2nd and 3rd. Mm -hmm. um, come back and see us every Tuesday, 9 p.m., right here on Facebook Live. Also, armdigitalmedia.com, Arm Radio Global. You can find us on Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. We love and appreciate you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Happy Pride. Happy life.